Hello and welcome to this ONDR Montreal video. This is video 8006 in our series of videos detailing how we uh, removed and refurbished our automatic transmission. In this video we're going to look at catalytic converters, um, the differences, part numbers, uh, changes through the model years and uh, some tips in how to remove them. We're going to split this video down into several sections or chapters. Uh, the first section we're going to look at the differences between different cats through the model years and types of X100. Uh, then we're going to look at the potential replacement options you have if you want to replace yours. Uh, section 3 we'll look at the location points you need to address when removing them. Section 4 then some recommendations for tools and some uh, hacks or tips. And then section five and six, removing them, first the left-hand side and then the right-hand side. Okay, first of all, the differences then. So the number of O2 sensors has changed with these cats. Originally, they only had one O2 sensor, the upstream sensor, apart from the US, which we'll come to in a moment. Then the AGA28 engine uh, got a double sensor. And that continued right until the final 4.2 litre. There are actually three positions of the O2 sensors used. Um, the, on this diagram, position two is the upstream heated oxygen sensor. And then the downstream sensor, as I say, for North American markets uh, was in position three. And then there was a temperature sensor used in the Japanese market and also became the downstream sensor in that position four. If you're interested, the upstream, upstream O2 sensors have the gray connector and some part numbers for the various model years there or engine types. The downstream sensors had the black connector. And again, it, there's some part numbers by the engine. The AJ26, as I say, didn't have any downstream sensor. The other difference is actually the lower joint type. So four litre cars have a slide fit onto the exhaust, whereas the 4.2 litre has a flange fitment. They also have a different mounting methods between the four litre and the 4.2 litre. Four litre cars have an angle bracket, which uh, attaches for the, from the lower cat to the engine flange. And uh, the four litre, 4.2 litre cars have a slightly modified joggled bracket. This is the angle bracket on my 4 litre car. You can see there in the circle. And this is this what I'm calling the joggle bracket on the 4.2 litre car. This uh, is a bit of a screenshot from Jim Stewart's steering rack replacement video. Thanks, uh, Jim, for that video. So summary of the differences then, you got uh, different O2 mounting points and quantity. You got the lower fitment of the exhaust, the bracket, and also the coating. Um, the catalysts are coated with palladium and rhodium, except for markets with only leaded fuel. We have f found some references for just downpipes, i.e. no cat at all. So these downpipes uh, most of the time they had catalytic converters fitted, but there is some part number references in the Jaguar catalogue for downpipes without cats. So it was sort of standard for some markets. Here are some of the original part numbers for the AJ26, AJ28 and the 4.2 litre, albeit not all available. Section two then, replacement options. As I say, all those original part numbers are not available. You're basically left with the choosing between two types, the slide fit for the four liter and the flange fit for the 4.2 liter. Um, these are part numbers for those cats as offered by S&G Barrett Group. Interestingly, it seems to offer the 4.2 litre, only offers the angle bracket. So I assume you need to retrofit an angle bracket 
if you have to replace the cat on a 4.2 litre car. If you know, know any different, please let us know. You can also purchase aftermarket high flow cats, um, 200 cell rather than the standard type. These are available um, from Nameless for the 4 litre. They also do one for the 4.2 litre with the flange mounting. Interestingly, you can see this particular one, aftermarket one, does suit the jockle bracket. If you're in the UK, there's also this sort of thing available from Swallows Jaguar. And you can actually find um, some downpipes without cats here available from, for, from Super Sprint, all of which costs lots of money. If you're in the UK again, these are DCAT pipes available from Powerbank Performance. Interestingly, it does look like they've got a cat, but there isn't one in there. Again, all quite expensive mods, to be honest. Uh, section 3 then, we'll take a look at the location points you need to address in order to remove your catalytic converter. So here are the locations on your catalytic converter. You've got the exhaust slide fit at the bottom, the engine bracket, the O2 sensor and the manifold flange. The exhaust fitment then, uh, you've got that exhaust location on the end. It's quite a long portion. Interesting, I've seen cats listed on eBay, etc. on the internet with this bit already ground away. So please don't buy any with this section removed. And you just see the cast bit. The lower engine bracket mount is mounted here. You can see on my cat, it's heavily corroded. Um, it is actually located to a bracket, an angle bracket or the joggle bracket at this point with two M10 bolts part number there and the torque. The O2 sensors, you don't need to remove the O2 sensors if you're just removing the cat, but obviously if you need to replace them, you need to use a 22 millimeter spanner uh, torqued to 40 to 50 newton meters. There's a bit of a quote from Gary Van Remortel's XK Bible at the top there talking about um, the actual operation of those. If you're interested in a 4.2 liter data uh, take a look at Gary's XK Bible. I'll put a link in the description. The manifold flange then is located to the exhaust manifold um, via these four studs and nuts. The gasket part numbers there. Again, those are actually torqued up to 60 to 80 newton meters. There's a part number over there for the studs, but the flange nuts I couldn't find the part number for, so I'm going to have to find that one out. I think it's worth taking a quick look at how to get how to get at these uh, these nuts actually on the car. This is access to the uh, left hand side bank with the header tank removed. You can see the um, ex exhaust manifold there, and this is the uh, flange joint to the cat. You can see the three uh, fixing points there are really quite good access. The problem one is that one. It's very difficult to see that one underneath there. Now, moving on to the right hand side, I'll remove the induction pipe to show you uh, access to the exhaust manifold on the right hand side. You can see here it's pretty tight but all the four bolts are accessible from the top. This one is really easy. There's one behind there you can get at with the uh, flexible joint but see, these other two are really quite difficult this one is so close to this uh, heat shield it's uh, difficult but you can get it with a wobble joint which we'll come into shortly but this one here is probably the worst of all the cat balls section four recommended tools I'll try and explain why you need um, these special tools it's all down to the amount of thread sticking out of the nut you're trying to remove. This is the nut and uh, stud. So actually this is the problem. So a standard socket, this is a 13 millimeter socket, actually it protrudes so much you can't engage the extension. It actually pushes off. So therefore you need to buy these extended sockets 
so that'll go inside and you can fit your extension so that's stage one now a lot of a lot of the access you cannot uh, fix the extension directly uh, because of obstructions so you can use a, a flexible uh, joint like this I've wrapped it in tape because it sort of uh, reduces the amount of uh, movement in it it's easier to place now this is also a problem because of the bulkiness it's very very tight to get in there so it's better to use the bar or the extension so this is really where these wobble uh, extensions come on where it's actually allowed to, uh, to give a little bit so if I put on that can you see it's actually moving so that actually believe it or not is really useful and it avoids the, the use of these bulky swivel pieces I did actually purchase one of these in an attempt my first attempt but this portion of the swivel is extremely bulky you can see where i've tried to use it it's uh it's fouled a lot so these are handy but no use for removing these cats because it is really tight down there so hence you need a 13 30 mil extension and a wobble bar to get these nuts off these studs we'd also recommend uh purchasing a 13 millimeter crow's foot and um, we'll go into me more detail um, on the uh, removal part of the video a couple of tips then um, before we get on to removing the exhaust first one is do not use 12 point soft sockets only use a six because if you're not careful you'll end up rounding off the nut and if these st get stuck on the studs it's going to be a big problem so that's the first one secondly obviously i've ideally going to use these um, deep sockets but some of the access is a bit tight so if you get a, a rubber washer and put it over the socket end you can actually um, get a reasonable amount of purchase on the nuts just using the washer to extend the socket obviously it's not ideal you've got a little bit it's not engaged so in that case you can actually use this e7 torx bit or it's actually a female bit and actually apply that to the end of the studs and actually you can shear off this portion of the stud as i've seen here and then in this case you can actually get a reasonable amount of purchase onto the nut. It's fully engaged with the nut. And if you press hard on the the uh, extension or the swivel bit here, you can actually get that to move. So there you go, a couple of tips or hacks for you. Section five then, removing the left-hand side cat. Um, you need to remove the coolant header tank to get at it first. Um, it's a really easy job. Take a look, look at our video, AT02, should be a link in the top right hand corner. Once removed, you can see the exhaust manifold um, sitting underneath there. This is the diagram of that top mount, just for reference. There are the location of the four uh, nuts and stud positions. This is actually in the car. Um, you can actually see three of them clearly, but the fourth one you can't actually see, and that's the tricky one. First one, the top right nut, you can be removed with a wobble joint and an extension very easily. The one closest to the engine itself, uh, you need to get your flexible joint um, and a short uh, extension socket to get access to that. Um, we do need to release the, also release the wiring harness slightly to give you a bit better access. The nut nearest the inner wing is a little bit more difficult. You need to actually um, move the heat shell out of the way because it's partially obstructed by that. And then get um, your flexible joint again onto that nut and you should be okay. The lower nut 
is located actually underneath the manifold and there's very little or no access uh, from above. This is the review from below. It looks a little bit better to access. And this is where your crow's foot together with a tape flexible joint comes in. Um, so the crow's foot will actually sit on that nut, as you can see here, just, just inside of the inner wing and the um, heat shield. You need to put a, a, a short extension just to uh, clear the um, flange casting. And you should be able to use that together with two extensions to reach down and get your um, ratchet on. And it should come off fairly easily, or it did in our case. The O2 sensor connection is actually located underneath the scuttle behind the throttle body. It's actually the grey connector for the upstream sensor in our case. Now I needed to get some pipe grips to actually grip it. It's very difficult to get your hand in there. So use some pipe grips just to pull it up out of the holder, being careful not to damage it. I then depress the retaining clip to unplug it. The wiring actually passes over the transmission on the left hand side and the uh, plug got connected, uh, sorry, got stuck in the wiring harness under there. I was able to tease it out eventually and pull it down clear. The next stage is actually to remove the rest of the exhaust system. I've already covered that in video 805. If you want to take a look at that, there'll be a link in the top right hand corner. So you need to detach the lower brackets from the transmission engine mount or flange. To do that, you just remove two bolts. Don't release, try as I did, don't release the lower bracket bolts because they're really heavily corroded and they just snap off, as they did in my case. Then you should be able to remove the catalytic converter clear of the vehicle. Okay, section six then, removing the right hand side. So in this case, you need to remove the air, air duct there should be a link in the top right hand corner. Once removed, you can access the right hand side exhaust manifold joint. This is the picture of that, or a schematic. Here are the four nuts and stub position. Again, there's one sitting under, underneath the manifold itself. This is, as you can see in the car, you can actually see the top two fairly clearly, but the lower two are a little bit more tricky. Again obscured by the heat shield and the exhaust manifold. The top one is the easiest one to remove. I forgot to mention previously I did try and use lubricant. It didn't really work because I seemed to shear off the uh, nuts and studs on this side and I ended up with a handful of bits and pieces. So not altogether that useful lubrication to be honest. The innermost stud can be accessed with a flexible joint, the one closest to the engine again, as per the left hand side. Sorry, the view's obscured by this um, wiring harness in the heat wrap. The nut close to the inner wing is a little bit more tricky again. You need to push that um, heat shield back and you can get at it with a straight extension in this case. Shearing studs isn't great. Uh, but I will replace them with new. I'll say I sheared that one off as well. Now, again, the one underneath the manifold is the tricky one. You can actually see, see it from forward looking back in the vehicle, but you can't get at it. Um, looking from the top, it looks something like this. It's tantalizingly clear, but you can't get at it. I did try again with the crow's foot underneath the vehicle again, but it didn't work it was slipping off the nut all the time um it's made even more difficult due to the steering rack being there as well so it's awkward i tried the crow's foot from above but it still slipped off um and it seems like it's down to the exhaust manifold casting itself as i've shown in red here on the right hand side the casting is very close to the nut and that crow's foot as it tries to rotate it's pushed off the nut 
by that bit of uh, casting material. So I tried a deep socket with an integra integrated flexible joint, but that fouled with the manifold. I then dis dis decided to basically compress a heel shield out of the way and use a deep socket with multiple extensions. And um, I used in the end a 3 8 extension because that improved the clearances slightly. And that seems to work. The O2 sensors on the right hand side again are located behind the throttle body. You can see there in the red circle. Again you need to pull it up to remove out of the mounting point. You can do this with your hand because it's a bit better to get at than the left hand side. Then you just decompress the clips and pull it off to disconnect. As I say it's easier said than done but access is much better than the left hand side. And then you can pull it down uh, clear, clear of all the um, bits that might snag when you remove it. Again remove the top uh, sorry the two bottom bracket bolts don't try the lower bolts as I've done here and just shear them off so you please don't uh, remove the lower bolts remove the top ones and then that cap can be removed from the car too okay so the next job to do is either remove the ancillaries from the auto automatic transmission but actually possibly my next job job is going to be to try and sort out the, the transmission jack and the support um, in order to remove it so you can see I'm a bit short height on my jack so a few issues to resolve okay hopefully you found that useful if you have problems with your catalytic converters and need to remove them hopefully that will help anyway thank you very much for watching please like comment share and subscribe for more xk videos